Welcome to our extended interview with lawyer Kelly Jordan. Kelly, what are some of the challenges and legal obstacles that couples, same-sex couples have in, if they're living in a, in a jurisdiction that doesn't recognize same-sex relationships? Oh, well, it's just terrible in those jurisdictions for those children because they have usually one parent who's not recognized as having the rights and responsibilities of taking care of them. And that can cause all sorts of problems if there's emergency health care decisions that need to be made with school registration and also, unfortunately, if the couple separates. Or if one of them dies. That's right. The law can act, um, I guess, towards that non-biological parent as if they're a complete stranger. That's right. And, and they may well be the primary caregiver. And it doesn't seem to be a very focused, child-focused approach to parenting in terms of the law. You know, people talk about, oh, same-sex couples shouldn't be able to adopt, same-sex couples shouldn't be raising children. Same-sex couples are raising children. And if we look at their relationships from the perspective of the child, shouldn't we make sure that both of the caregivers have the legal obligation to take care of that child, to provide for the child, to provide the necessities of life. That's what's critical. And there are jurisdictions where they can't even adopt. That's true. So that there is no way to protect that person. And what about inheritance? If, if same-sex marriage is not recognized in a jurisdiction and one of them dies, uh, there'd be inheritance tax. That's correct. And what about if they separate? Well, that's, that's problematic. Some, some, unfortunately, sometimes when a couple separates, the, the, the partner who is the legal parent because of the biological connection may try to argue that the other parent's rights and responsibilities should be restricted. On the other hand, the, the, the parent who's not the genetic mother or father might try to claim that they don't have a child support obligation for their child because they're not legally a parent. So there's really a patchwork across the states of which, where these relationships are recognized, and it really should be something that comes from a focus on the child. And even if we put aside the child for a moment, when a couple separates that's been together perhaps a long time, and the law doesn't recognize that they were in a spousal relationship, there can be huge injustice when it comes to the division of property, spousal support. Absolutely. It's critical that the law recognize relationships as they exist. Absolutely. Now, another issue that I think has been emerging lately has to do with the rights of donors who are known. You know, not every same-sex couple chooses an anonymous uh, parent. Sometimes they have someone they know who's willing to donate and be the biological father. Do, is, it, is it wise for a person who's been approached a man to come and speak to a lawyer about uh, about this before volunteering? Oh, it's it's critical that that the parties consult with lawyers independently and that a contract is drawn up that sets out everyone's intentions about what the arrangement is supposed to be because sometimes the donors are not involved, they're not taking a parenting role, but other times they are. And if you don't do a contract at the outset, in the event that there's a disagreement later, a judge or a court isn't going to know what the what the what the intention was of everyone. But would a court be bound by such an agreement? Let me give you an example. Let's say that someone asks me to donate and I think, gee, you know, why not? And I have been promised in a contract that I won't have to pay any child support, that I won't have any obligations at all, and that I don't have any right to see the child. And then a few years later they think, well, heck, he's a judge. He makes a good salary. I think we should go after him for child support. And I, on the other hand, say, well, I think I'd like to see the child. After all, that's my biological child. I want visitation. What would the courts do with an agreement that was made before the child was even born? Yeah, so it really depends on the jurisdiction. There are jurisdictions where donors are, uh, their rights and responsibilities are spelled out in the law, but there are other where there is no law. And in those cases, the judges make those decisions, usually based on what they think is best for, for a child. But it's, it's happened on more than a few occasions that donors have been held to be financially responsible by the state for children that they aren't taking an active role in parenting. And that's problematic. So if, if a man lives in a jurisdiction that isn't likely to recognize that kind of contract, he should know, he should speak to a lawyer and find out that he may have to pay child support even if they've, the, the mothers have agreed that they're not going to claim it. That's, that's absolutely correct. And what advice would you give the mothers? 
Well, when the mothers come to see me and they're maybe trying to decide between using a known donor, a friend, or uh, even a brother of one of them, or whether they're trying to decide about using an anonymous donor, I talk to them about trust issues. Because ultimately, because the law is unclear, you have to be able to trust the person, the known donor, that, that he's going to respect in the future um, the role that they want him to take in their family. And that may be an involved role or it may be a completely absent role, but you certainly want to make sure that he's thought through it, I recommend that they go to seek counselling and talk talk the issues out and that's really important because the whole process of drawing up the contract then becomes a way of everyone making sure that they're on the same page. Of course you're talking primarily about uh, jurisdictions in the United States I would think where there really is tremendous uncertainty and difference in between, as between the states over the rights of gay people. That's correct. In Canada, it's quite different. Well, in Canada, there's equal marriage across Canada, and we have a patchwork in the, in the United States of where marriage is recognized. I mean, in Canada, certainly, equal marriage has gone a long way to recognizing same-sex families and their children. But I wonder, you know, thinking about your, your comments that people may even need counseling, I wonder how many uh, people that enter into these arrangements uh, to father a child ever think that they should speak to a lawyer or go to a counselor? Well, certainly the, in the ones that I see that have gone wrong where they have a disagreement, they often did not have a contract, did not seek the advice of a counselor or lawyer. And, you know, sometimes for a donor perhaps, he'd never been a parent before and, and wouldn't know what, what he would want. Well, on that note, I want to say that I think it's really important that people understand what their rights and their obligations are before they enter into the decision to be a parent, and that's true for everybody, gay or straight. It is. Thank you so much for being on our show. Thanks for having me.